Image Magic, a popular open source tool for manipulating images, hit a vulnerability last year. It allows a regular user to drop to root shell easily. In this video, we will analyze the vulnerability and show how this can be exploited in Arch Linux. Let's go to the vulnerability details. One of the main requirements to satisfy this is when Image Magic version is less than or equal to 711-35 and it must be an app image program. App image is a handy way of packaging Linux applications by including most dependencies and requirements inside the application itself. But there are other things that it relies on like the Linux shared libraries, which we will discuss more later. Let's go back to the terminal and see if we satisfy the conditions for the vulnerability. One quick way to check if the binary is an app image application is if we see this string inside. Now let's check the version. We also confirm that our version is vulnerable, meaning we satisfy the two conditions. The key to the vulnerability is on how the image magic environment variables are being resolved during runtime. These will be the magic configure path and LD library path. The first one is specific to image magic, while the second is a standard path in Linux and Unix that determines where to look for shared libraries. Below here, you see where the vulnerability resides. It is inside the app run script, which is the one being called to start the application. We see here that it uses the read link command. Let's understand how this command works. This command is used to resolve the real path of a symbolic link. For example, if we tried to execute it without any option, it will return something which is the real path. That's because the argument we passed is a symbolic link. Now, if we pass an argument which doesn't exist, it will return nothing. Same will happen when we pass a regular file as argument. Now, the behavior becomes different when we use an option. The app run script in Image Magic uses dash F, so let's see what happens when we use it. Even though the path doesn't exist, it still returns a result. Let's try another one by adding another non-existing directory on the path. This time it didn't return anything. How is that possible? Dash F is to canonicalize a path. That means it will try to return the absolute real path of the symbolic link. This will remove dots or double dots or any similar thing you will see on relative paths. But there are certain conditions. It will return a result if all except the last component of the path exists. In our first example, slash temp exists, but X doesn't, so it satisfies the condition. But on the second command, only slash temp exists. X and Y are not there. So it didn't return anything because it needs both slash temp and X to be present another option which is not entirely related to the vulnerability but I think we're sharing as well. That is dash E which is stricter conditions. It requires that all components in the path are present in order to return something. So whenever any of the non-last component of the path is missing, image magic will return an empty result. Same happens when it executes ReLink to determine the path on where to load the shared libraries. If an empty path is returned, image magic tries to load anything it sees on the current directory. This is where an attacker can craft a malicious shared library. The person who discovered the vulnerability put here a nice steps on how to exploit it. But this is for Debian based systems like Ubuntu while our target distro is Arch Linux. So there will be a bit of a challenge here. The good thing is that app image can be run on most Linux distributions. Let's go back to the terminal and try this out. The first thing we need to do is to install the required libraries. Since we are on Arch Linux, the package names will be different. We just need a bit of Googling to determine the right name. For example, in Ubuntu, we need to install libfuse2. But in Arch, it is named as fuse2. One way to verify if you are installing the correct package is to look at the content. Here we know this is the correct one since it contains the libfuse shared library. Another example is the libfont config in Ubuntu. In Arch, that library can be found in font config package. So we just need to do this until we satisfy all the dependencies. A while ago, we already confirmed that we are using the vulnerable version and the binary is an app image. The only thing remaining is to compile a shared library on the current path. Here we include some of the standard libraries. Then we will use a constructor attribute so that it will be loaded before anything else. This is just like initialization methods in other programming languages. And since this is a shared library, we don't need to create a main function since it will interfere with the one from the binary we are running. The code below is self-explanatory. It will just print the current user ID and exit afterwards. Now let's compile this. It is important to put dash shared since we want to produce a shared library. Then we will just drop this on the current path. We don't have any issues with compilation, so we are good. Now let's run the sudo command. We encounter this error where it is looking for a certain function but unable to locate it. We can spend time looking for this in Google, copying it on our shared library, recompiling, but there is an easy way to trick Linux. What we can do is we can just create a dummy function with the same name. 
then we can compile and run again. This time, it is now looking for a different function. We can repeat same steps all over again, but our code will become messy since there will be a lot of dummy functions. What we can do is to define a macro that we can reuse. We will name our macro stub. Then we will put the dummy function after that. We will call this and pass the function name that is being called during program execution. We just repeat this for all missing functions and that should do the trick. Code is cleaner and easy to debug in case there will be any issues. Now we can compile and run this again. This time it is successful and we were able to run a system command as root, meaning our exploit in Arch is now working. What you saw in this video is just one of the many techniques of exploiting a vulnerability in a different Linux distribution. There are more out there, so if you know something, feel free to share it in the comments below. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.